What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Racing Bros Podcast, episode three. It's been a minute. We're not here with Cody as usual, but we do have Isaiah. Hey, guys. So, we're going to jump right into things with today's news that Team Penske has swapped all of their crew, their cup crew chiefs around. Like Paul Wolf no longer with Brad Kozlowski, Todd Gordon no longer with um, Joey Logano, etc. So, uh... Isaiah, what do you think of the uh, the news today? I really don't understand why they would move the crew chiefs of the two and the twenty two around because I feel like they're working pretty good. Blaney's so so, but I mean, I don't get it. See, you'd think so, but whenever Brad got eliminated from the playoffs last uh, season, there was a lot of talk about if he and Paul Wolf would be separated or like if there was tensions brewing and stuff. And so this move wasn't really all that surprising. Uh, Todd Gordon and Joe Logano, if you listen to their uh, in-car audio, towards the end of the last season, they were getting real snippy with each other and, like, real short-tempered. And Blaney, he just wasn't really winning or producing as well as the others. So a fresh start for all three was probably the best situation, even though Todd Gordon and Joey literally won a championship two years ago. So I don't really understand. Mm -hmm. Well, probably when they started not performing as well together, they got a little heated, but... That's kind of normal. That's how it should be if you want to win, but we'll see. Maybe it'll be good for them. And I do think it's interesting people say that um, separating Brad and Paul Wolf was a major mistake. Whenever you think about it, from like 2012 to about 2016, maybe even 17, but 17 was really a down year up until like right for the playoffs, and they got eliminated really fast afterwards. Uh, or that was 2018, excuse me. But uh, I think 2017 they made the Final Four. They used to, like, really gamble on, like, fuel strategy. Like, even if they had a bad car, they'd still win races. And just lately, I don't even know if you can blame the package, because 2018, for the most part, 2017, like I said, they made the Final Four, so that's a, a different story. But the last few seasons, they just haven't been clicking as well. I think the Todd Gordon and Joey thing is more surprising, as I said. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. It may get better for them, maybe. I, I don't know. I'm thinking it's more of, like, a Ford deal that they're having the issues they're having, but uh, maybe changing it up will help them out. We'll just have to see what happens. I guess when JGR wins 19 of the 36 races, you just gotta throw the kitchen mm -hmm. and change everything. Yeah, you gotta do something different, but I just don't know if it's actually within each team. I'm pretty sure it's more of a Ford and Toyota and Chevy thing. Mm -hmm. So... So that was just today's news. Not going to spend too much time on that because there's really nothing else to talk about. Um, they don't want to go over like, predictions or anything. But there is something I do want to talk about, and this we can go in depth in because we do have the stats to back it up. Everyone gives Eric Jones major crap because he's apparently underperforming. He doesn't deserve the 20, etc. And upon looking at his stats and just simply watching races and using the eye test, I don't think it's really fair to discredit Eric Jones' season, last season, or his future with JGR. If you look at his stats, he was had just a little bit less, uh, oh, terrible English, he would, he performed just slightly worse than Brad Keselowski last season. He was on par with, like, uh, Kyle Larson. Other than the wins, he was close to Chase Elliott, and he's been in the sport for less time than them. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a win in each of the last two seasons, and it's not his fault. He underperformed compared to his teammates because, this is not an opinion, he was on the best team in NASCAR history last season. His teammates won 18 of the 36 races. Like, his three teammates combined for 50% of the season. Yep. So, yeah, it's hard. With the, <clears throat> with the way that team is and how great all four of the teams really are, if you're just not winning quite as much, you're going to get told that you're underperforming. But it's really... I don't know. I don't see how he was doing anything different than the rest of them. It really, to me, isn't much different than like the HSR or <laughs> SHR deal with Suarez. It just the other teams just happen to be a little bit better. It probably isn't so much about driving. It's just the way the team's working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I don't. I understand he definitely was the bottom of the JGR drivers. And maybe someone else could have done more with his little experience in that ride. But mm -hmm. 2019 was, what, his third full season? This isn't yeah. like the Jeff Gordon era where someone's going to immediately take off. 
and dominate. Well, exactly. And how many of these drivers that you see moving up actually do anything within the first couple of years? It's not like it used to be. Like when Kyle Busch came along, it was different. Yeah. Kyle so. Larson is quoted as the generational talent. And, I mean, I'm sure you can argue the Ganassi equipment. But even he didn't win until, what, his, his third full season? Eric yeah. Jones had two by the end of his third season. Mm-hmm. How long was he, how many years was he in Xfinity? Uh, one. Yeah. And how long was he in trucks? He ran part-time in, I think, 20, I think he ran, I can't remember if he ran part-time in 2013 and 2014 or just 2013. Uh, he ran max two seasons. I don't know if yeah. he ran full-time in 2014. I feel like he may have just gotten moved up too fast. And when you do that, everybody's expecting you to actually do something. And if you take some more time in a cop car, it's going to. The Xfinity cars are quite a bit different than the cup cars are. And really, I feel like the same thing is probably going to happen with Bell, especially with the ride that he has for Cup Series. But yeah, it may be a little bit better for him because he's going into a lower tier ride first to learn the car. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Toyota dumped so much money into Levine that they're, like, on par with the Gibbs equipment. Yeah, they might be. We'll see. With him in the car, they may do that. So. I'm sure that was the whole point. Get rid of De Benedetto, and we'll give you a ton more funding and support. Or keep De Benedetto, and we'll give you exactly what we had this year. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. For a little team, that's, like, a no-brainer. Like, no matter how much you feel about the guy, uh, you gotta do business first. I think it ended up better for him anyway, so. Yeah, I would definitely take the Wood Brothers, which is literally... The Wood Brothers ride right is... Yeah, it's a good car. Nothing like that Levine car has been, so... I don't know. We'll see. They may... It would make sense if they would dump more money into that car and get a lot closer to a Gibbs car, but it'll take some of the uh, pressure off him as far as being told he's not performing, so... Honestly... I feel bad for Bell, though. As much hype as he has right now, I like the kid, but as much hype as he has right now, if he doesn't go and win a race in his first season, I, just, I can't wait to see. I hate to see the comments he gets. Yeah. I don't know. It's just tough. I don't think that the Xfinity car is really getting the drivers ready to be in cup. I don't think the trucks do either. The trucks definitely don't because they drive completely different than either of the other two. Yeah, we talked about this in the group chat, actually. This is kind of off topic, but we talked about this in the group chat a couple weeks ago. Or at least I went on a tangent about it. And a couple people responded. That's usually how it works. Uh, what even is the point of the truck series? Like, yeah, the racing's awesome, and there's a lot of cool personalities down there. But does the truck series itself actually even really? I don't even know. Train. I don't. What's the word? I'm like. I don't know. Does it even help a young driver move up? Because like you think about, it, you have K and N stock car with little power. Then you have Arca. A stock car that runs a little bit bigger tracks, like Daytona, Pocono, Michigan. And there's a little mm -hmm. power. And then you have trucks, which is a like <coughs> truck. And it runs the big tracks, little tracks, etc. And then you go to Xfinity, back to a stock car. And then Cup, the ultimate series you're trying to get at, at this ladder. And it's a stock car. Like, I don't really see the point in having a truck series. I mean, the well, racing's this... cool, but you'd think Arca should be what trucks is trying to be. I mean, so essentially, the trucks are still just a stock car. The chassis aren't much different, but... Dude, as far as it goes, body, it? yeah, the body's weight, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely different. But, I mean, um, so, like, <laughs> where am I trying to go here? <laughs> the uh, trucks, basically the way I see it, you're supposed to be getting more track time on the tracks at the bigger series race. But the difference between them body style-wise and car-wise doesn't get you ready for the Xfinity Series. And the Xfinity Series, for whatever reason, isn't close enough to the Cup Series to get the Cup guys guys ready to go to Cup. And I really think they need to change it. If they're going to have the series, like a truck series, be there, it needs to be like a primetime series and just have it be its own separate thing. The Xfinity Series needs to be a lot closer to what the Cup cars are like it used to be, how they pretty much look like the same cars with a little bit less engine, Maybe a little less money in them, but Literally they got it. It needs to change. This seems to me the way that the when the COT car came along in the Cup Series, the Xfinity Series beefed up their car to kind of look like it, and they haven't ever changed it back. 
you know, they're it still keeps there. changing a little bit by little bit, but it's still that big car. Christ, even the trucks have changed since then. Yep. I mean, the trucks should just be, as far as I'm concerned, when it came out, it was just its own little series, basically. Yeah. It was a lower series for the trucks, but it wasn't there for the guys to make it out of that to go to the Cup Series. It, was just it just happened to be there. It and it's cool for... NASCAR series. It wasn't really part of a development ladder. Yeah. Like it's cool for, like, a manufacturer to have their truck line shown like that, but... I mean, at this point, that's pretty much all it is, but it's not... You can't even... So in the predicament to, like, I'm in, I can't even watch the truck races because they're on random-ass channels. Yeah, so I don't... Yep. So I don't really know what to say about it other than it needs to be different. I, th I just think it's interesting the way motorsports have their development ladder and, like, their tier system because F1s makes perfect sense. <laughs> makes sense. Because... The cars always look like they start look okay. So at the very bottom, they don't really look like an F1 car, but you can tell what they're trying to be. All the way up to about F2, which looks like an F1 car, just smaller. But the entire time, mm -hmm. you can see it growing towards an F1 car, and that way they're learning as they go. You get more speed, but it doesn't really change. IndyCar's development system, like, there's Indy Lights, but like what's below that? You know, like the road to Indy, it's like so complicated. And then you have NASCAR, which right at the middle of the system like you have k &N, or i guess arca east and west arca a random truck series and then xfinity cup like the the system it doesn't and then you have people jumping tiers like the nascar's development system needs to be reworked like i i enjoy the racing so i'd want to see as much racing as possible from all the series so i don't want them to lose a series just because it doesn't work but i just think yeah. like, i don't know like <clears throat> in my opinion the the way it's set up was made more for back when people could actually afford to take a chance on people. And as you worked your way up, you'd hope that you did good enough, somebody would give you a ride. But nowadays, nobody can afford that. So you have to get a good sponsor that's following you to jump up the series. And now there's just, it just isn't set up for that at all. It's set up more like, basically, I would say the indie series is, or any of those places where there's only really one big series and you just have to get into that somehow. So. Yeah, that's basically what IndyCar is. Like, they do have Indy Lights where people do progress, like, um, like the Xfinity <laughs> series, but it's not always necessary to go through Indy Lights. So, like, Fernando Alonso, obviously the F1 driver, or the former F1 driver, runs the Indy 500 almost every season now, and he's never once ran a race in IndyCar or in Indy Lights on any other track. He just has run the Indy 500. So, like, mm -hmm. it almost makes it pointless if... Like, obviously, he's a, a very special, like, scenario. Like, that's not going to happen for everyone. But, yeah. like, NASCAR. I don't, oh, go ahead. I don't understand about, like, F1 and stuff. And I'm sure there's, I'm sure I'm just kind of ignorant towards it because I don't know anything about it. But it seems to me, like, there's only so many cars. So how do you ever get new people into it, ever? There's nothing to work. Like, you have to wait for somebody to be too old or somebody to completely fall out and then you manage to get into it. So you could be sitting there forever and not ever get a ride where you want to be. And either that or IndyCar, really. So the way F1 works is there's quite a few minor series and usually every season the best drivers of the past season move up a rank, whether it's from F2 to F1 or, you know, like all the little mini series all the way up there. Because there's a bunch. There's like... Yep. It's just an open wheel series. Well, I know I've seen Formula E before. But... That's not really the same. That's where, like, in my opinion, failed drivers go. Uh, I'm, not <laughs> saying, I'm not going to upset anyone. But, so, like, the F1 system makes a lot of sense because you have guys coming from karting up to, like, um, F3 and all that. I don't even know if F3 is still a thing. But usually every season, like, Mercedes, Red Bull, etc., they'll have their guys in F2, like, their, uh, their next generation talent, like, next, like, next year's talent. And if they do well enough, they'll usually get moved up to like Toro Rosso or like Williams or something. Um, so it's very fluid how they move guys up. Like you wouldn't think it was because they only have like what twenty two guys a race. Or yeah. A season. And there's literally only those cars. Yeah, like there's you don't all have the time. to get in. You just qualify for a starting position. You don't have part time guys really. 
like I think Marusha or Manor was like the last team to actually have <clears throat> multiple drivers throughout the season, and they end up folding that season anyway, so it didn't really matter. Mm-hmm. So, like it's you'll never I mean, see an F one like a Rick Ware situation where you'll see multiple drivers in a season for the same car. Well, that seems to be even kind of petering out for NASCAR because there is not the money there to do it. Rick Ware, I mean, they've had the they managed to yeah. like one or two cars start the season to four. Mm-hmm. Look, teams like that, they're literally just, they're racing for money. Mm-hmm. It's just business. They aren't actually, like, competing, I would say. I don't know. It's something that needs to change in the whole sport, but it's probably not going to. It's just the way everything's going. Yeah, that's back to the whole uh, tiers, or the development ladder, NASCAR ladder. There's so little sponsors in the sport now that there's really not enough to stretch up the series. So why would a sponsor pay, I don't know, I don't really know how much they would pay to sponsor a top-tiered truck like Brett Moffitt, who did run some sponsorless races this season. Last <coughs> season's champion, a guy who made the final four this season, ran a couple races unsponsored. He even won in a, a solid white truck this season. But why would someone, like some random company, pay so much to be on a top-tier truck that most people aren't going to watch the series when they could pay... To be in like a mid pack or a, a lower tier car and cup, you know. Yep. Yeah, I don't. <clears throat> so this, I think the NASCAR should do like a streaming thing type of deal, where because right now, I mean, the truck races are always on FS1, which I don't get, so I can't watch that. Xfinity races, I don't even know where they are. At the time I have watched a few, but Xfinity I mean, is the same thing as cup. I should probably admit that I have not watched much NASCAR in, like, the last three years. See, but... don't worry, like, people will attack you for something like that. You don't really watch, but you still kind of understand what's going on. Like, it's not like... I watch it. Completely I watch it on the NASCAR app while the race is happening. Yeah, so, like, you still know who's because the series, who's champions, and all that. It's not, like it's not accessible. Like, like they, they've made it... Even the Cup Series, when it's NBC, is on, on this NBCSN. It's not on the actual channel. So why, like, I don't understand why they can't get it back to being a primetime type of deal like it used to be. Well, that's not NASCAR's fault. The reason they do that is it's obviously the uh, TV provider who chooses that. Yeah. Or not, mm-hmm. uh, like NBC or Fox would choose that. NASCAR's not say. So I think really... the NASCAR should do its own thing. Or they do their own, all three series. Anybody can watch them when I want. I'm sure you're going to have to pay for it, obviously. But, like. Just make it so it's the thing on that channel, or like a Netflix type of deal. You just get on there and you watch it. So I know what you're getting at. So I was going to mention this a minute ago whenever you started this. So, I you obviously are not into WWE. Um, WWE has their own streaming service. It's literally the WWE Network, and you can find mm-hmm. any like WWE match other than Chris Benoit. You can find any <laughs> WWE match. Like, I've watched it before. <laughs> yeah. Like, I have a the count on it. They literally have like what would be WWE's version of like NASCAR America stuff like that. They have so much WWE type content that you can only mm-hmm. watch WWE Network for a month and still not watch any repeats of episodes or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. NASCAR. And NASCAR, I think that's how it should be. Yeah, NASCAR should make something like that. F1 even has something like that. Um, mm-hmm. It's not obviously as in depth. And if you notice NASCAR on their YouTube and like Facebook and stuff have been. Like showing old races lately, like they, they, I think just yesterday they uploaded Kyle Busch's first win at Fontana. Yep. In mm-hmm. Yeah, I've watched more of those lately than I have <laughs> races for me. So, if NASCAR started their own streaming service, it would be so badass. Like they have honestly, like sixty years of races they could show. I mean, the early ones obviously weren't televised, but they have like forty years of races that are captured on footage that they could just upload to the streaming service. And people could watch old seasons, they could watch old season reviews, they could watch past episodes of Race Up, past episodes of NASCAR America, or whatever other NASCAR show they had. <clears throat> like, yep. NASCAR I think that's just how it should be. Such a good business decision. I don't understand why it hasn't been done yet, especially since I would, Disney has a streaming service now. Yeah. I would love to just get on and be able to watch the race, watch qualifying, practice, any of that stuff on demand. Well, right now, you can, if you want to spend, I think, five bucks a month, you can get NBC, uh, like, 
track package or a track slide package or something like that. And you can get like uh -huh. cup practice qualifying, some K and N stuff, some modified stuff, some IMSA, which is pretty cool, I guess. But I think that only works if it's on the NBC channel. Uh, so like the second half of the season. Yeah. We get the races. I don't know how we like, talk about this though. I don't know. It just came up. So let's get back on topic here. You ready? Okay. So the next topic. Uh, man, we were flying through this. So this is something I wanted to talk about in the last episode, but ran out of time. So obviously Martin Truex Jr. got a new crew chief because Cole Pern, like, very suddenly stepped away. Uh, I don't think anyone's seen mm -hmm. that coming. I know I sure didn't. Which. Nope. Which this might be a hot take or something. It might have been talked about now. I want to talk about this two weeks ago. Ran out of time. Do you think the Martin Trix Jr. era is over? And before you give me your response, and before the audience clicks off because they think I'm sounding stupid, let's put it in perspective. <laughs> Truex and Cole Pern got linked up in 2015. Truex was a rookie in 2006. So 2006 to 2014, he had two wins. From 2015 to 2019, he got, what, 25 wins? So... Mm -hmm. The obvious connection there, he was on the 78-2014, 78-2015, so it wasn't a new team. The obvious connection was Cole Purden. Cole Purden made a guy go from two wins in almost a decade to a champion, almost 33 wins. Yep. And now, that piece is gone. He does have James Small, who was the engineer last year on the 19 car. He's still in Joe Gibbs Racing on what was the best NASCAR team in history, you can't debate that. No team has won 19 races in a 36-race season. Like, they made Denny Hamlin go from a winless driver to a six-time winner in one season and made the Final Four. Eric Jones got a win. Kyle Busch got, I think, he tied Morgan Shepard for, like, 11 top 10 to start the season. Like, JGR, did, they won, like, almost every crown show. They won the 500, the Coke 600, the Southern 500. They won Homestead. Uh, yep. They didn't win Indy. Kevin Harvick won Indy. But you could debate if you consider that crown show anymore. <laughs> so, well, um, I don't, I don't think it's over for him. I think maybe they will struggle for like a few weeks, maybe half the season even. But it's just them trying to get acquainted with each other. But I think whatever they did with Pern there woke MTJ up. I think he'll be good to go once they get acquainted with each other. He can get really moving. But I think him he himself as a driver woke up from whatever little stoop he was in for the longest time and got him going. Now, it's also not fair to say, like, MTJ was just a two-time winner in a decade because while that is true, I – obviously, I'm a big Denny Hamlin fan. So I like to go back and watch, like, some of Denny's wins. And I think in 2011 and 2012 alone, Denny took so many wins from Truex late in the race – uh, Kansas, for one, in 2012, Denny passed Truex late. And Truex had dominated the race back in the old 56 car. Um, there was a Lanner race that Denny won that Truex ran really well at, and he had issues. Uh, so Truex definitely, he had a good run at DEI at, I think, New Hampshire or something. And yeah. it's something happened at the end. <coughs> well, definitely has had the skill since the beginning. He didn't just randomly remember how to drive. He's a two-time Xfinity winner. But, you got to think about it. The DEI thing fell apart, and when it was falling apart, they none of those cars were any good for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And I really wouldn't say that Earnhardt Ganassi was much better when he was racing with them. And then he went to uh, Walter up there. That really, once again, fell apart, and it wasn't much of anything for quite a while. And, I mean, he just got to the 78 team, which... At the time, wasn't anything. It was just an underfunded team that was there. Mm -hmm. Once they started getting help, he started getting better. And Pern came along, and that's when he woke up. But I think he was just in a slump. When DEI was good in like the nationwide series, I think maybe it was at the time. Probably was just the Bush series. Yeah, it was Bush. He was pretty good with them back then, and he was probably decent with them when DEI switched him over to Cup. But DEI started falling apart in pretty much two thousand six, two thousand seven, and then. It just was bad for a really long time. You gotta remember, whenever Dale left DEI at the end of 2007, who was their drivers in 2008? They had what? Mark Martin part time, maybe? Yeah, part time. And the eight car. Yeah, in the eight car. They had what? Regan Smith, Paul Menard, and then Truex. So, like, 
he was the senior full-time driver. Because let's be real, I don't really know how much Mark Martin really helped the team. Uh, that was just a weird situation. A lot of people forget he actually drove the 8 after Dale Jr. left. Yeah, he did. Well, it wasn't the same 8, but I mean, it was the 8. Like, Which I think it was the 08 at the time. But. No, he drove the 8. Number 8 US. Oh. Hmm. I, know I don't know. That whole... Guitar hero car. But, like, he yeah. was technically the senior driver, like, out of the full-time guys. And then, what, he leaves and goes to MWR. And he ran well. He made the playoff, or the chase. And then the year he actually was, like, at his hottest, he won Sonoma in 2013. He would have made the chase, but they did some BS, and he got kicked out. And then yep. his sponsor leaves. And then he goes to the tw- uh, 78 car, which was a really weird thing. I thought he'd be out of the sport after 2013, honestly. But then he goes to 78. Mm-hmm. The 78 made the playoffs, or the, damn, the chase in 2013 with Kurt Busch. They got, I think, pole or qualified second. No, they qualified second in the Daytona 500 because, obviously, Austin Dillon, Austin Dillon got pole because the 500 qualifying is rigged. Changed my mind. But he qualified second, and then he wrecked in the duel, so we had to start at the back at Daytona. And then that was just, like, the worst season of his career. And then suddenly how 2015 comes, and he had, like, 17 top 10s to start the season. Not in a row, obviously. But, like, he had one win at Pocono, made the final four in his Chevy, went to Toyota in 2016. My boy Denny ripped his heart out at the 500. And now the missing piece, or the piece that he was missing all those years has left him with Cole Pern. Yeah. But like I said, like he has a new crew chief. Like, I mean, he does, obviously. But James Small was his engineer last season, so he's obviously gotten to know him. Yeah, and the team is not new. They just have a new crew chief, which isn't new anyway. So I really don't think he's – I mean, they probably won't be – dynamite like right off the bat but they'll they'll be all right i think most of his slump he was in was due to the teams that he was with he came in at the time the dei fell apart and he was only there for a little while wall trip was beginning to fall apart so i don't know we'll have to see maybe he'll be completely screwed but i doubt it no yeah i think i think he'll be fine I don't know if we'll see Truex win eight races again this season like he did last season. No, I I don't think so. And honestly, hot take, you can mark it down right now and hold me to it. I don't think Truex makes the Final Four this season. He's only not done it twice, 2014 and 2016, I think. Yeah, 2014, 2016. Um, I don't think Truex makes Final Four. And honestly, I'd be shocked if he won more than three races. Mm -hmm. I agree. Like, I, I do think he's going to win, but I don't think he's going to win that much. Like, he's probably going to win, like, I don't know what track. He's going to win. He's probably going to win, like, a, I don't know, probably a Charlotte again because he's really good at Charlotte. Like, probably a Kansas. And honestly, I bet he wins, like, Richmond or something stupid. So, just because I kind of want to, I want to hear who you think is going to win the championships this year. In Cup? We haven't said it, but I just want to know. So... I might sound biased. Mm-hmm. I know you're what you're going to say. <laughs> I really do think Diddy could win it this year, but I'm not going to put all my chips in his stable. Um, I've been let down way too many times in the past. And honestly, as a Hamlin fan, it said in a long time ago he's probably never going to win one. So, like, I don't go into every season, like, thinking, oh, this is his year. I just want him to win races. You know what I mean? Last season was great. Probably the funnest season in a long time. Six wins, final four. He was running second with, like, 40 to go, and the damn tape screwed up. So, I the tape screwed up. Answer, I guess the crew member put too much tape on. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the tape did it. I think it happened to be whoever decided that was. <laughs> I meant to say the tape but... screwed up, not the tape did screw up. Uh, it was good of him to not just like flat out be pissed off at his crew for doing that. No. A lot of people just blame like flat out freak out about the fact that their crew did that. They were just trying to get probably the guy that won the championship. Feed. Yep. No, nah, but honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the champion was someone like, uh... Honestly, Kyle Busch again. I could see winning back-to-back. I'm not, so, I, I got... Take, but Kyle Busch is a hot one. I believe... I don't I got two. Honestly, I think that Jimmy Johnson is going to do something here. Whether it's... I, love that. I don't know if he's going to win the championship, but I think he's going to win some races. I hope and, he uh... Yeah, he needs to do something because it really sucks that he's gonna go out the way that he is on a three-year, on a two, yeah, three-year losing streak. And goes from being so hot to just completely junk for three years in a row, and then just retire, and that like I don't know ruins it. But 
I think it's for me. It's between him and Kyle Busch. I think Kyle Busch will probably win it again. But I don't know. I just want Jimmy to actually do something. I I don't even like. I haven't liked Jimmy ever. Same. But well, I mean, I've started. I want him to do something. Past year, I think like 2018 is when I started really kind of pulling for him. Cause like, I just started feeling bad for him. Exactly, yeah. like, I never like disliked him. I would be like, ugh, every time he won, like it would get old. But I never wanted him to like suck. Like, if yeah, you're I can't understand. You want to do it against the best, and Jimmy is the best. Even if he's still sucking right now, he's still the best. But I want the best to be at their best, especially in his final year. Yeah, he just it puts a bad look on his whole career just because he goes out this way, and it shouldn't, but it's how it is. He's gonna end his career at like the lowest of low, and it wasn't just the last season; it was like the last. It'll be the last four seasons that he hasn't done. Anything. Yeah, his last win was Dover of 2017, which was like May, maybe early June. So it's been a long time. Yeah. Honestly, and that same thing like Richard Petty. Richard Petty's last win was in '84, and he retired in '92. So. So, I don't really know how to say this because of, he didn't actually retire, but Dale Earnhardt has the exact same issue. I mean, he or, won the championship in 2000. Yeah, but he wasn't. Nearly as fast as they had been. From like 90, I don't know, his last like four or five years, he definitely started falling off. But 2000. It was from like his last championship up. They didn't do much. But he did have that race at Talladega. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. When he went from 17th to first and like no lap. <laughs> but, that was in 2000. He also had that photo finish with Bobby Labonte in 2000. Like he had a couple wins. Yeah. Out, he, I think he finished second in I the mean, race. they had they not had the issues they. That ended up happening in 2001. Maybe that would have been a season again, but I, I don't know. Something that he had felt super confident for the championship 2001, and then obviously we never got to see if that panned out, and that ended up being Jeff Gordon's fourth and final championship. But yep. Honestly, I don't know, man. I think the guy who retired at the perfect time was Rusty Wallace. Yeah, and he still hates the fact that he did. Yeah, no. He kind of got pressured into it. That's what. Well, when you're. That's the problem is when you're going, you're on top. You don't want to leave because yeah, if you got, you, there's all those races you still could have won, but you don't know that the next season for him could have been the worst season ever. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I I feel like somebody like Dale Earnhardt stayed in it way too long. That dude, you're gonna get us crucified. I know I am. I'm like the biggest Dale Earnhardt fan there is, and I still, I've th- ever even like. My dad is, well, that's the reason I am, but he agrees that, like, it should have been done in 98 after he won the champ, or the Daytona 500, it was enough, but I don't know. I think there's just a certain amount of time you're supposed to stay in the series, and for some reason, Jimmy Johnson seems to have stayed too long, and it doesn't really make any sense, but. Yeah, it's always sad when a driver who had been had such a fantastic career stays too long and it just like Daryl Waltrip he had an amazing career but he stayed way too damn long yeah like, he kept pulling on it too long and it, it's just sad like you look at his career and you don't really remember the highs you just remember how it ended as soon as he lost or didn't have an actual ride anymore and he had to make his own team he should have just been done he shouldn't have been getting his own car trying to go because he just tainted the whole thing because he couldn't win and it couldn't really do its crap like, because if you saw what he did in the number one for DEI whenever he filled in for Steve Park in 98, like, mm-hmm. he clearly still had it. It's just he wanted to own his own team for whatever reason. I'm sure he could have found a top-tier ride, or at least a mid-tier ride, and won a race mm-hmm. or two. But I don't really know the reason why he decided to own his own team. Obviously, I wasn't alive at the time. I was running 97. But... It's because the rides. The rides have just been falling apart for him. He was starting to lose it, and then that just... He should have been done, because that just ruined it even worse. He wasn't terrible with that car, but he wasn't great anymore. Yeah, like Tony Stewart said, he had to constantly use provisionals. And... Yep. Like Terry Labonte, he stopped racing rice. He stopped racing full-time. Racing. Full time. He yep. did stay around way too long. He raced up to like 2014 in that silver 32 car. But he stopped full-time in, what, 2005, 2004? Yep. And it was perfect. Yeah, well, that's fine. If you if you're a race car driver, you want to race, so you come back and do some racing. But yeah, it's always cool. Don't try to act like you're actually there to win races. 
it's like you're trying to hang on to what once was and it's just it's gone mm-hmm. yep so cars 3 taught us a very important lesson <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and that's exactly so we can end it here <laughs> anything else you want to say other than apparently you can bring your friggin' Honda Civic and win against all the NASCARs. That's what that movie taught me. <laughs> all right. Well, that was episode three of the Racing Bros Podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Isaiah, for helping. Mm-hmm. And as always, we'll see you guys next time. Later. <laughs>